a very cheerful morning to everyone present over here respected jury and all the dear participants today we are gathered over here to learn something and that is to express the views on the debate competition on the occasion of वर्ल्ड पॉपुलेशन डे अंतर्राष्ट्रीय जनसंख्या दिवस पर हम एकत्रित हुए हैं इस वर्चुअल प्लेटफॉर्म के जरिए थ्रू जूम एज आई वॉन्ट टू स्टार्ट विद अ ग्रेट कोट बाय टॉनी रॉबिन्स दैट इज पीपल हु सक्सीड हैव मोमेंटम पीपल हु सक्सीड हैव मोमेंटम द मोर दे सक्सीड द मोर दे वॉन्ट टू सक्सीड द मोर दे सक्सीड द मोर दे वॉन्ट टू सक्सीड एंड द मोर दे फाइंड way to succeed similarly when someone is failing similarly when someone is failing the tendency is to get on to downward spiral that can even become a self fulfilling profession so means that failures and success they are the part of life but the main thing in life is from both of them we always get the experience by which we can lead and we can do many great things in our life and that experience can no one take from us with this note now i want to start introducing our great jury members i'll start with dr sneha lata ma'am ma'am is presently working as an assistant professor in goswami ganesh datta sanatan dharm college sector 32 chandigarh she has a great experience as she has worked in pu icer punjab university institute of social sciences education and research punjab university chandigarh as a resource person also four months experience in pg government college for girls sector 42 other than that she has experienced and she has taught in the department of history punjab university chandigarh as a guest faculty also eight months experience in mcm dav college for women sector 36 and also she has worked in london school of business and certified accountant as a educational counselor for four weeks ma'am has done her phd in 2020 from the department of history punjab university chandigarh talking about the achievements ma'am has been selected for rajiv gandhi national fellowship to pursue a phd and ma'am also one prize for securing third position in history subject in the college with that securing third position in bet ma'am has also conducted many seminars and attended many workshops ma'am has a great experience in the field of history power of accommodating the knowledge to everyone as ma'am handles a youtube channel where she teaches and guides the students in different various fields and and teaches a subject history for the undergraduate students now talking about our next jury member ma'am kamakshi rathore ma'am is working as assistant professor in department of history gdsd chandigarh ma'am is currently pursuing phd from the department of history punjab university chandigarh ma'am is a gold medalist in amphil from punjab university masters in the specialized study of modern india history from the center of historical studies Jawaharlal Nehru University Delhi ma'am has published two papers and ma'am has a certificate of proficiency in history consecutively in 2011 12 and 13 ma'am stood meritorious for 3 years in the inter college history quiz competition apart from academic degrees ma'am holds other graduation degree in kathak with first division from bhatkhande sangeet vidyapeeth lucknow Ma'am has also been entitled as the best speaker of our school and won many dramatic and debate competition. Ma'am has a great experience in field of teaching and guiding students in various fields of dance and uh, other cultural activities also. So I again give a very warm welcome to our both the judges, Dr. Snehalata Ma'am and Ma'am Kamakshi Rathore. Thank you, Dikshant. We are more than elated with all the praises that you've showered on us today. That's my pleasure, ma'am. Uh, and it's a it's a real honor to be here. So thank you, Dikshant, for inviting us, and all the very best, everyone. Yes, welcome, all the very best, participants. All right. 
So, uh, with the introduction of our judges, I'll be moving towards the next round that is rules and regulations, which is very, very important. Although I have told everything in the video which we published yesterday, but still, uh, the students who could not watch it, I'll be repeating all the uh, rules and regulations and I'll be introducing some new pointers also which were not told yesterday. Okay, so as we know that each speaker will be allotted with two plus one minute. That means, aap sabhi ko do minute diye jayenge bolne ke liye. Do minute se pehle aap apni speech complete nahi kar sakte hai. If you do so, do so, you will be disqualified and aap teen minute se zada exceed nahi kar sakte hai. You cannot exceed more than three minutes. So that means your speech should be between two and three minutes, right? At two minutes, a bell will be rung, an alarm will be given to you. And that means you have to be now alert that you cannot go beyond that. That means aapko alert ho jana hai ki you have been remaining with the one minute. At two minutes, I'm again repeating, a bell will rung, which means that you only have one minute left with you. And a final bell will rung at three minutes, which means that your time is complete. So I repeat first bell at two minutes and the second bell at three minutes, which means that you are finished up. Simultaneously, we'll be running a stopwatch on the share screen also. How much the time is. And secondly, the slots which we have decided, only those students will stay in the slot, those who are being allotted. Because as we know that Zoom has a limitation of 40 minutes. So simultaneously, 40-40 minutes slot will be there. And we'll be keep informing you people through WhatsApp, the another slot which has to come. Now we have only told three slots. We have revealed only three slots. When they'll be finished up, we'll tell another three slots. So in this sequence, we will be moving out, right? Another thing is that no student is permitted to on his or her audio and video without the permission. Only when your turn will come, then only you will be allowed to speak and present your views. If you want to inform, if you want to intimate us, you can intimate through WhatsApp number and there will be no calling right now. We, will, we won't accept calls. Only a message on WhatsApp will be allowed in any emergency. Nextly, no entry for outsiders in the competition, non-participants. If anybody is found circulating the link or if anybody is found creating the nuisance or any informal or irregular activity, he or she will be disqualified immediately and a strict action will be taken against him or her. Results will be compiled today only, but depends upon the time limit. If it, it will be possible for us, we'll definitely declare the results immediately after the competition or in the evening. So that will be told to you people via our WhatsApp group only. Nextly, take care of the purity and integrity of the language. You cannot use any informal or any irregular or rubbish words during the speech or during your conversation. That will also lead to rejection from the competition. Other than that, if any participant is facing any difficulty due to network, due to signal issue, he or she can tell us, we will fix the slot accordingly. There is nothing like this, that if the turn is missed out due to the network issue, so that speaker won't be able to speak again, we will give a chance and we will accept if the issue is genuine. So those students who face they can intimate us and will be given the chance at last. Other than that, if any confusion, any query is there, the students can ask. And the last thing, the last thing which we will be, uh, uh, you know, telling you people today is now there will be a small one minute extempore in the competition, which means that जैसे ही आप लोग अपनी तीन मिनट की स्पीच खत्म करेंगे, उसके बाद आपको एक मिनट दोबारा बोलना है. Ab yahan par judges aap se koi question nahi puchhenge. There will be no cross questioning. There will be no questions from the judges side. Only there will be a one minute speech round. Which means that aapko yahan par ek minute mein. Jab aapki speech teen minute pe khatam ho jayegi. Uske baad ek aur minute diya jayega aapko. Usme aapko basically apne views rakhne hai topics related. Your personal observation. 
analysis, personal views regarding the topic. What do you feel? What are your research skills behind that? आपने कितना उसके बारे में extra study किया है? What are your personal opinions? तो वो आपका immediately निकलना चाहिए and that is to be done at the spot in those uh, in that one minute if you are unable to do so the marks will be deducted as previously we mentioned we have given a parameter for this also so that will show that how much attentive you are and how much you can speak on the spot without the preparation so 3 minutes for your speech and after that one minute for your पर्सनल एनालिसिस मींस हाउ मच यू कैन स्पीक जितना भी आपको पता है एक्स्ट्रा जो आपने स्पीच में नहीं बोला है उसके अलावा जो भी आपको पता है दैट यू विल बी स्पीकिंग इन दैट वन राउंड सो आई होप दिस इज क्लियर टू यू पीपल एंड आई होप यू विल डू योर बेस्ट एवरीवन विल परफॉर्म वेरी नाइसली विद फुल कॉन्फिडेंस एंड विद नो हेसल सो दिस वाज ऑल अबाउट द रूल्स एंड आई कैन सी सम पार्टिसिपेंट्स नाउ कमिंग now this will be the slot one the names which i will be taking now they will only stay others can leave then we'll uh, intimate them and then we'll tell ki when the next slot turn will come then you people have to join so now i'll be i'll be taking out the names and those students only stay in the competition so the first i'll be uh, saying is raghav khandelwal ansh mishra pallavi gupta ibtesam rahman manasi panda and yukti nagpal only these students of slot 1 will stay others kindly leave the session then we'll call you when your turn will come thank you so much i'm sorry for speaking in between but i have a question yes please hmm. so i have a question that uh, for the last speech as you said that we would be summarizing it within one minute right hmm. a few points so in during that speech can we um i'd say can we summarize the points that our previous participants of our previous uh, not as in uh, not as in summarizing it but i'd say somewhat countering it or somewhat in a uh, in a way that could summarizes because i would be summarizing my speech within the 3 minutes all right but then i would like to also hear out like this is the very big reason why i'm hearing out everybody right uh, all the five participants other than me so the last uh, one minute that i would be given so can i counter them or can i just speak something uh, something related to the speeches all right so nishant uh, i'll be telling over here they will be we have not kept any rebuttal you cannot rebut anyone but yes without referring to anyone you can in a journalized way in a very journalized way you can uh, yeah you can just uh, give a counter to that stance so yeah it will be accepted but the main uh, focal point the main focal point for this round is that your personal analysis is required so you can include any argument you can include anything but it should be apart from your speech there should be no summarization summarization is to be only within 2 to 3 minutes so that's th that time but here you can do a counter but it should be not any uh, like it should not uh, relate to any personal participant it should not relate ki aap kisi bhi participant ka personal yahan par uh, uh, review ko rebut kar rahe ho it should be your personal opinion via uh, while uh, not referring to anyone personally right so yeah you can do it but in a very journalized sense all right i mean uh, like uh, what i got from you is that not picking out someone's name and just generalize uh, generalizing right. the statement all right right yeah all right thank you so much All right. So we'll start with Raghav and uh, Manisha. Uh, kindly share the screen if possible. Okay, Dikshang. All right, uh, Raghav, you may start now. Can you tell me, am I clearly visible and audible? Yes, Raghav, you are clearly audible and visible. Now you may start. Okay. Imagine being stuck in Bombay's traffic, or imagine living in cramped apartments devoid of most indispensable services. Well. That's Dharavi, one of the largest slums of the world. Now imagine traveling in an overcrowded public transport with people dangling on its doors and bars. Well, that's our trains. These precedented scenarios remind us of the humongous population of our country, India, which is at the doorstep of 1.4 billion. Namaskar, ladies and gentlemen. I, Raghav Khandelwal, is present before you to speak firmly against the motion that is. growing population is a hindrance in progress but before starting i just want to know that what accounts for what are the estimates accounts for progress of a country well there are two elements which account for a progress that are economic development and human development i would fundamentally talk about these two elements first at the point the economic development 
growing population hampers economic development for instance let's take example of unemployment growing population punches the economy into a situation of underemployment let's take an example of india in india annually there are 24 million job seekers in india but only 7 million are able to secure jobs and there is a huge job deficit in india let's take another example of gdp per capita gdp per capita is total gdp of a country divided by the total population so india is the fifth largest gdp country but its gdp per capita is very low and it ranks 122 among the 189 nations in gdp per capita unemployment and gdp per capita causes poverty and income inequality which shackles the development which shackles the economic development transposing to the human development the hdi rank of india is 131 out of the 189 nations and that's not promising and ladies and gentlemen talking about health i need not to remind you that we have seen the horrifying queues for beds oxygen beds icu beds etc we have seen those horrifying queues we have seen our health infrastructure crumbling and we have seen that it was not able to manage the overpopulation ladies and gentlemen the sad reality of today is india has only fully vaccinated 7.03 crore people and it's just a tip of an iceberg owing to the huge population now if we see what can be done to prevent it we have seen that uttar pradesh government has recently passed in population control bill with some coercive measures with some highly coercive measures to prevent population but what i feel that they are futile in a long run in a long run the focus should be on the quality of human resource not on the quantity of the human resource talking about the quality of the human resource people should be educated healthy and they should be safe from all those pandemics and rest of the things then here comes the need to the safety and government should adequately spend on people's education and safety so ah. that the human resource so that Oye. the human resource so that the human resource can become an effective resource thus i would conclusively say that population is a bane until it's not judiciously employed thank you everyone all right well spoken raghav great efforts thank you so much now i'll move to the other participant that is ansh mishra ansh mishra kindly unmute yourself and kindly on your video ansh mishra can you hear me i think there is some network issue let's move to the next participant i will be moving towards the next participant the next participant is then iptisam rehma iptisam kindly unmute yourself hello am i audible yes yes you are audible i'll just uh, let you know when you have to start iptisam all right so iptisam you can start now your time starts Good morning everyone I'm Iftisam Rahman and I will be speaking against the motion on the topic how growing population of India has become a hindrance to the progress As we have seen the overpopulation in India often results in the backlog in the economic as well as the social spheres of the country since it leads to the overutilization and overconsumption of the nation's natural resources that is ultimately the nation's natural assets and hence it affects the wealth of the country so if we talk about one of the basic amenities of life which is healthcare there is a huge shortage in the healthcare sector due to this huge abundance of population which results which often results in malnutrition spread of diseases epidemics and pandemics and these issues often become difficult to tackle due to this huge population and lack of adequate manpower who are qualified enough to take care of the situations so suppose we take the ongoing corona pandemic in hand so we see that the risk of spread is much higher in india in comparison to other countries due to the fact that and we have also hit the third wave due to the fact that india's population is ever increasing it is so much that it becomes difficult to curb and control it also we have seen that with the advent of industrialization people have become less and less concerned towards environmental issues deforestation selling of trees soil erosion releasing of uh, industrial uh, waste into the water body 
all these are effects of our aftermath of industrialization and the annual growth rate in population of 2% has ultimately accelerated the degradation process in the environment and has ultimately resulted in a in major environmental crisis if we talk about the economic factors we see that gdp or what is known as the total wealth or the income of the country in an accounting year it is seen that india ranks among the top 10 countries over the world but if we calculate the gdp per capita of the country we have seen that it is much less if we talk about us which is the leading uh, country in terms of gdp it has the gdp per capita of approximately 35000 us dollars however india even though it is in the top 10 it is at a mere 790 dollars this is a major reason uh, the major reason for this is because of india's growing population which is not sufficient in comparison to, uh, comparison to the income that it is receiving however this can be curbed because if we take the example of china one of the neighboring countries of india we have seen that in the year 1970s they ad adopted a major policy that is the one child policy wherein families were only supposed to limit the children to one person one child and this has resulted in a major economic boom in their country and we have seen that china is now one of the leading developed nations another major concern because of overpopulation Stop it, this is time your time is over All right, Iptisam. Thank you so much for your lovely speech. A very factual speech. I will be saying over here with a great fact. Thank you so much. Okay, so next I will be inviting over here Pallavi Gupta. Am I pro uh, properly visible? Yes, Pallavi, you are visible. Are you as well? Yes, okay. very fine. You are visible. All okay. right. Let me so, know when to start. You can start now. Your time starts now. <clears throat> Okay thank you a very good morning respected judges and my co debaters my name is pallavi gupta the topic for today is growing population a helper or hindrance in india's progress so there's an old saying unity is strength and in light of this quote throughout my speech i would throw some light on why the growing population is definitely a helper in india's progress so first of all judges i will do some characterization as to what we mean by the topic i would define the topic as to what we mean by population as well as population growth the oxford dictionary defines population as the number of people who are living in a particular geographical region or in a particular country and talking about population growth according to cia world fact book the population of india was 128 crores in 2017 and it has grown to 139 crores in 2021 now talking about my case why i believe that these growing numbers of india has helped in india's progress um now giving the points i would be uh, categorizing my points in three categories the first one would be the economic reasons and under economic reasons i further have two three more points then the second one would be the defense the third one would be uh, how because of increasing population we are able to represent our country better in the foreign frontier okay so beginning with the economic reasons the first one is about human resource and economic development so the human resource refers to the people who have some skill and who can contribute to the country we know that india has a great population and thus we have a great human resource let me give an example of china china has the largest population in the entire world and uh, because of this increasing population it has great numbers in the human capital index the human capital index is measured from 0 to 1 and china's human uh, capital index is 0.88 which is extremely high and that's a great thing for china and that is all because of its uh, large population so because of the large population uh, we also have a great youth in the country when we when i compare the population of india to the population of japan in japan we see that the growth has uh, decreased a lot in recent years and due to that the number of youth and thus the working population is very less in japan while comparing it to india since the population has been continuously increased uh, since i said that in 2017 it was 128 crores 
and now it is 139 crores so there is a increase in the number of youth which is directly related to increase in the number of working population and thus there is an economic development in our country now my second point being more population means more competition while uh, a number of people say that because of large population they are not able over. to get all right thank you so much pallavi for a very great informative speech i will be saying over here a great speech with a lot of information all right so now done with the pallavi i'll move towards the other participant yukti nagpal your time starts now yukti you can start your speech imagine a car that has a limited seating capacity of 5 people it can accommodate to one more person which will create an undesirable situation for other passengers sitting in the car as all of them will have to leave a small space for the same person now what if couple of more people decide to go the same car even if they to accommodate themselves in the same car the car will eventually break down after some time as it is carrying people beyond its carrying capacity honorable jury members and my worthy opponents a very warm good morning to one and all today i yukti on the occasion of world's population day is going to speak in against the motion undoubtedly growing population of india has proved to be a hindrance in the progress now remove the car with our planet earth and the passengers sitting in the car with the enormous number of people and think how far this planet would sustain if we keep on adding more and more people on this planet which already has a fair number of resources our population is a serious environmental concern and one of the biggest threat of growing population is deforestation and loss of biodiversity we don't even know the extent to which we can continue to lose species before the ecological system collapses however many scientists and ecologists many scientists and ecologists including 57 of the world scientific academies have warned that we are approaching that point i repeat we are approaching that point isn't it dangerous guys is this how we are making use of our education and technology is this how education playing a vital role in controlling the overpopulation it's a cause of depletion of our natural resources isn't it a, isn't it a point of major concern it leads to conflicts and wars don't you think it's affecting the unity of our nation unemployment rate is rising day by day now why shouldn't we worry when it comes to the economic condition of our country it's creating an immense pressure on the world's fresh water supplies now isn't there a need to raise voice when our lives are at risk in my opinion better safe sex techniques and knowledge about contraceptive methods should be imparted to the students and people should be made aware about family planning so in nutshell i just want to conclude that instead of controlling the environment for the benefit of population perhaps we should control the population to ensure the survival of our environment Thank you for giving me your precious time and have a nice day. Well said Yukti very particular on the time no exceeding and a speech with a lot of information and the research I'll say over here thank you Yukti once again now we'll be moving towards the another participant Manasi okay Manasi you can unmute yourself and uh, on your video hello am i audible and visible yes yes manasi but sir before starting i would like to take the permission to stand and give my debate sure very sure as you feel comfortable all right thank you shall okay. we start so yes manasi you can start your speech your time starts now Hello everyone this is me Manasi Panda feeling very fortunate to be a part of this virtual debate competition i wish everyone out there a hearty good morning today i am connected with you all to apprise you to the center of attention towards growing population of india a helper or a hindrance in the progress today i am going to speak in the for of the motion that is a growing population of india is a excellent helper in the progress towards development the fact that humans are the ultimate resource which make use of all other resource cannot be ignored a coal is but just a piece of rock when until and unless people were able 
to invent technology to obtain it and make it a resource moving ahead when we talk about population how cannot we talk about india but unfortunately for many decades in india a huge population is considered as a liability rather than an asset but a huge population did not to be a considered a burden for its economy or progress towards development rather it can be turned into a capital by making investment in the form of education as well as healthcare moreover correct me if i'm wrong that we have been always given the example of japan how without having natural resource it gave emphasis on human and service sector and became a developed country but my dear friends can you give a example of indoor plant to a huge outdoor mango tree no obviously not likewise India should not take Japan as a preference and focus more on service sector because then we will be not able to generate sufficient amount of job for such a huge population rather we should focus more on agricultural sector take interest in combining agriculture with modern technology because the development in agricultural sector will lead to permanent development of the nation you might be thinking why i gave this instance actually through this instance i just wanted to say that quality and strategic planning of people is far more important than the quantity of people and yes if good qualities of people is accompanied with huge quantity of people then it is like a tank full of human capital so all i want to say is let us all let us all be have a good qualities of people uh, instead of focusing on large quantity which will eventually lead us to a throne less path towards development so with this i would like to mute myself thank you jai hind very nice very particular on the time a speech filled with great examples and a very informative one thank you manasi for your wonderful speech all right so now uh, we'll be starting with the personalized view uh, about your speech right we'll hear just in one minute okay so raghav your time starts now so i just wish to say that the world population day was started uh, was started celebrating from 1989 and in approximately 2000 the india crossed 1 billion population and still we are on the path of 1.4 billion and we'll soon uh, by 2027 we'll soon surpass china on its population but what about the polity of india the indian polity has never much focused on the population growth instead it has focused on other requirements let's suppose our uh, let's suppose our population is currently 1.4 billion and we are spending very less on the population development human development basically on education we are currently spending 4 to 5% of the gdp and comparing to other countries like china it's a very meager amount and this amount should be definitely exceeded because according to me population is a bane until not judiciously used and for judicious use it should be educated secondly talking about the health sector it's already crumbling due to the covid pandemic and we need to strengthen the health sector though the expenditure on the health sector is considerably increased but it's just a tip of an iceberg we need to completely figure it out how to invent the new health now. services thank you raghav your time okay. is over okay now i'll be inviting uh, iptisam just give me a minute yes okay iptisam your uh, your time starts now you can start with your personal opinions i would like to focus on two major problems that are that have arisen due to the overpopulation firstly is poverty and second is unemployment both of these are major issues that if not tackled at the earliest can lead to great problem for the future for the country so if you talk about unemployment if we see people who are qualified but not given enough jobs they can ultimately fall and indulge into crimes and other delinquencies and this can cause a major threat to the national security and in the future they may also join terrorist groups and this will be uh, this might also lead to war so we need to take care of this overpopulation and try to in any way curb it secondly we need to stop our consumption because over overpopulation often leads to overconsumption people need to start being more sustainable and leave 
lead more minimalist life like sufficient but good life so that we can not only be good to our nature but also to our country so that we can give back what we receive from our Stop country it, so your time is over thank you so much pallavi gupta okay so you can start pallavi okay so talking about how the growing population is basically helpful for uh, india's progress so talking about the defense uh, part we know that india has the fourth largest uh, defense in the entire world and if there's a war or any such situation so the countries who have more number of people who have more people in world in defense obviously those countries will have a uh, kind of a better um, uh, they will be better in comparison to those countries who have less uh, people involved in defense then also i want to talk about how more population means better representation in the foreign frontiers have we heard about countries like paulo or nauru i don't think we have and that's because these uh, these countries have less people in their country and so uh, so these uh, people are not also able to represent themselves well while indians are while indians are present everywhere uh, while in uh, usa or canada or even in australia and that is why they have better representation Stop. in the world i want the okay, time is over uh, pallavi thank you so much yukti nagpal may i start your time starts now yukti oh uh, well in my opinion uh, population should be controlled by ourselves by our choice uh, i mean pop- we should control the population voluntarily or i think nature will do that for us but in a brutal way and uh, in my research i have found out that there are many causes of overpopulation such as decline in the death rate in advancement in fertility treatments and improved medical facilities including a lack of family planning among people and secondly sustainable development is something uh, that is keeping things in mind about the future needs and generations and i think we should use the resources by keeping that thing in mind sustainable development should be adopted by the people and uh, knowledge about contraceptive methods currently is not imparted to the students in school which i think should be included in this syllabus also and uh, urbanization is also the consequence of overpopulation uh, more and more trees are cut down for more and more trees are cut thank down you, for the, uh, for over. creating the housing thank, thank you so much okay the last candidate manasi please unmute yourself yes manasi now you can start with your speech your time starts now to be all honest i am a girl who believe in practical observation rather than database information because data can be manipulated but facts and practical things cannot ma'am one thing i th- uh, i th- what i observed is that the human beings being the producer and consumer of this earth resources we every time tends to uh, say that it's our right to enjoy everything but at the same time we should not forget that it's our duty there are some duties we need to perform towards it also as we know that the du- responsibilities and the rights are the two sides of a coin so we just enjoy our rights but we forget to perform our duties and the day when we will do we will enjoy our rights and perform our duties that day we don't have any such debates on such topics so that is my view and uh, i think you all are very practical and you all will agree with me thank you perfectly with the time thank you manasi for your you point okay. all right so we are over with the personal uh, additional and uh, personal analysis round so ma'am now we'll be ending this slot one and after 5 uh, minutes ma'am we'll rejoin again so thank you so much everyone and you all can leave the session thank you again kindly start a very warm good afternoon to all of you and a happy world population day myself subhashish patel and uh, i am here to deliver my speech on the topic india's growing population is helper or hindrance in development so i so i allotted to i allotted to speech uh, for the motion so I started my speech with some facts. सबसे पहले मैं आपके साथ कुछ फैक्ट शेयर करना चाहूंगा हमारी इंडियन पॉपुलेशन के रिगार्डिंग 
ट्वेंटी इलेवन के सेंसस के अकॉर्डिंग हमारी पॉपुलेशन थी कुछ वन थर्टी फाइव करोड़ एंड एंड हमारे यहाँ का जो पॉपुलेशन डेंसिटी था वो था फोर सिक्सटी फोर पीपल पर पर स्क्वायर किलोमीटर एंड हमारे यहाँ का जो फर्टिलिटी रेट था वो था कुछ टू पॉइंट टू परसेंट एंड एंड हमारे यहाँ का जो हमारे यहाँ का जो लिटरेसी रेट था वो था कुछ सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट जो एक परसेप्शन चला आ रहा है हमारे माइंड में पहले से जो हमें बताया जाता है कि जो हमारी पॉपुलेशन होती है वो पॉवर्टी से डायरेक्टली प्रपोर्शनल होती है पर एक्चुअली में ऐसा है नहीं जो हमारी जो पॉपुलेशन है वो एक्चुअल में हमारा एसेट है हमारा रियल एसेट और जब जैसे आप सब जानते हैं कि इंडिया की करेंट पॉपुलेशन करीब फिफ्टी परसेंट पॉपुलेशन की एज ट्वेंटी सिक्स से नीचे है मतलब हम एक यंग ग्रोइंग कंट्री है तो अगर हम हमारे इस यंग मैन पावर को एज एन एसेट यूज करें इसके स्किल डेवलपमेंट पे इसके स्किल डेवलपमेंट पे अपना काम करें अपने एजुकेशन पे काम करें अपने हेल्थ केयर पे काम करें तो हमारी जो पॉपुलेशन है हमारा जो मैन पावर है वो दुनिया का सबसे बड़ा मैन पावर और दुनिया का सबसे बड़ा एसेट बन के उभर सकता है सो so, इसके रिगार्डिंग मैं कुछ पॉइंट रखना चाहूंगा सर मैं कुछ कंपेरिजन करना चाहूंगा चाइना और इंडिया के बीच में क्योंकि जो दोनों की पॉपुलेशन है लगभग सेम सेम है चाइना आज वर्ल्ड वर्ल्ड के बिजनेस सेक्टर को आज लीड कर रहा है वो क्यों क्योंकि उसने अपने लोगों के स्किल डेवलपमेंट में बहुत काम किया है और इंडिया उसी चीज में पीछे है और वो करीब दुनिया के सेवेंटी इलेक्ट्रॉनिक प्रोडक्ट्स सिक्सटी परसेंट शूज लग्जरी प्रोडक्ट्स सेवेंटी स्टील फिफ्टी एप्पल अकेला प्रोड्यूस करता है क्यों अपने मैन पावर की वजह से अपनी प्रोडक्शन कैपेसिटी की वजह से उसने ये सब करने में वो क्यों कामयाब हुआ एक समय जब 1902 में इंडिया और चाइना जब दोनों एक स्टेज पे खड़े थे जब इंडिया की जो जीडीपी थी वो चाइना से बहुत ज्यादा अच्छी थी लेकिन चाइना ने अपने स्किल डेवलपमेंट पे काम करके अपने लोगों पे काम करके अपने हेल्थ सेक्टर पे काम करके अपने लर्निंग पे काम करके अपने लोगों को इतना स्किल बनाया कि आज उनकी जो ग्रोथ रेट है वो दस के हिसाब से बढ़ रही है और वो हमसे इतना आगे निकल चुका है आ, कि वर्ल्ड में यूएस के बाद सबसे मजबूत इकोनॉमी उसी की है तो सर मैं यही कहना चाहूंगा कि भारत एक युवा कंट्री है अगर हम भी हमारे स्किल डेवलपमेंट पे हमारी एजुकेशन पे काम करें तो भारत को विश्व गुरु बनने से कोई नहीं रोक सकता थैंक यू सर ओके थैंक यू बहुत ही Uh, हम बोल सकते हैं अच्छी स्पीच दी शुभ आशीष पटेल ने इनकी स्पीच में काफी सारे पॉइंट्स थे और काफी हिस्टोरिकल पर्सपेक्टिव से भी बहुत ही अच्छी स्पीच थी थैंक यू शुभ आशीष अब हम नेक्स्ट आई बी गोइंग टू द नेक्स्ट पार्टिसिपेंट दैट इज गविश लोहार्ट गविश कैन यू हियर मी यस एम आई विजिबल एंड ऑडिबल Yes, Gavish, you are visible. You are properly audible. Uh, Manisha, you can start the time. Your time starts now, Gavish. Mr. Winston Churchill rightly quoted, "Healthy citizens are the greatest asset a country can have." A very hearty afternoon to the respected judges, organizers, and my fellow debaters. I am, and I staunchly support the motion. growing population of india is indeed a helper in its progress progress can be equated with achievement improvement and development historically several factors have contributed to india being a populous country like rich agriculture perennial rivers and a good climate more space and more food means that babies could be born more easily and survival rates are higher as well fast forward to today it is a fact that human resource is the most precious of all resources because without it all the other resources are rendered worthless some of my competitors might bring up china's one child policy as an example to curb the population problem but do you know that the one child policy was actually a failure rise to certain complications like gender inequality and an aging population wherein the working population is on the decline in contrast according to the united nations population fund india is regarded as one of the youngest countries with more than 62% of its population in the working age group in the minds 
definitely a catalyst in progress in my opinion having said that the un data also projects that india is bound to have the lowest dependency ratio amongst the major economies in the next 25 years now what is this ratio one may ask the dependency ratio comprises of the people from the age groups of below 15 and above 65 not forming part of the working population and hence acting as a sheer liability many developed nations are concerned about this shortcoming of their population for instance japan interestingly the indian diaspora is spread across the globe indians are demanded all over the world for their exceptional skills and hard working nature they earn the much needed foreign exchange for our country fun fact the middle class consumer base of india equals to the entire population of the us this highly speaks of the economic significance and caliber of our people as india is destined to become the third largest consumer market in the world attracting foreign mnc's and offering better choices to its consumers on the concluding note i believe that we need to keep in mind that millions of indians cannot be simply wished away with the blink of an eye it is the need of the hour that we accept the fact that we are the second most populous country and put efforts in the fields of investment in education health and employment to unlock the hidden potential of our population thank you so much all right gavish so very nicely you presented with lots of facts a very factual uh, speech i would say over here okay now i'll be moving towards the next speaker adip khan adip khan agar sun pa rahe hain so just unmute yourself ji sir jab main dikhai aur sunai de raha hu yes aap shuru kar sakte hain ji sir main ji sir बिना सोचे समझे इस कदर अगर जनसंख्या को बढ़ाओगे तो एक दिन बिना पानी के मर जाओगे महोदया मैं पटल पर मौजूद विषय के विपक्ष में अपनी बात रखूंगा बढ़ती जनसंख्या एक वायरस की तरह होती है जिस तरह एक वायरस जब कंप्यूटर में प्रवेश करता है तो वो कंप्यूटर में मौजूद तमाम तमाम डाटा को तमाम तरह के सामग्री को बर्बाद कर देता है उसी तरह बढ़ती हुई जनसंख्या विश्व में होने वाले विकास कार्यो में बाधा डालने का कार्य करती है आज जब पूरा विश्व जनसंख्या नियंत्रण पर बात कर रहा है तो भारत इससे पीछे क्यों रहे बढ़ती जनसंख्या से कुपोषित बच्चों की संख्या भी तो बढ़ी है माल न्यूट्रिशन की रिपोर्ट कहती है कि उन जिलों में भी कुपोषित बच्चों की संख्या बढ़ी है जहां एक दशक पहले ऐसे बच्चों की संख्या कम थी बढ़ती जनसंख्या से देश में बेरोजगारी बढ़ी है ऐसा नहीं है कि हमने रोजगार देने की कोशिश नहीं की बल्कि रोजगार हम किस किस को दें मान महोदय आप बताइए महोदय जनसंख्या हर रोज बढ़ती है पर हर रोज संसाधन तैयार नहीं होते पेट्रोल डीजल कोयला तैयार होने हजारों साल लगते हैं मानवर मैं आपको बताना चाहूंगा आज बढ़ती जनसंख्या से सबसे ज्यादा खतरा वार्मिंग को है आज बढ़ती हुई जनसंख्या से हमारा देश जो कृषि प्रधान देश है उसकी जमीन को रहने के लिए आवास तैयार किए जा रहे हैं जब कृषि प्रधान देश में कृषि की जमीनें ही खत्म हो जाएंगी तो बताइए उस देश की अर्थव्यवस्था में कैसे तरक्की पैदा होगी और वह देश विकास कैसे करेगा हमने फ्री किताबें बांटी हमने जगह जगह आजादी के बाद कई स्कूल खोले पर इतने बच्चे होने की वजह से हम उनको बराबर की शिक्षा मौजूद नहीं है असमानता का भाव है पूरी दुनिया में असमानता का भाव है बढ़ती हुई जनसंख्या से बढ़ती हुई जनसंख्या का नतीजा यह है कि दुनिया में मौजूद खाद्य पदार्थ में से छियासी खाद्य पदार्थ केवल बीस लोग उपभोग करते हैं मौजूद जल का उपयोग में से पचासी जल का उपयोग केवल बारह लोग कर लेते हैं इतनी असमानता है मेरे विपक्षी दल कह रहे थे कि नहीं नहीं जनसंख्या को बढ़ने दो ये तो विकास कार्यों में मददगार है मैं पूछना चाहता हूं वो बिला हुआ बच्चा जो कुपोषित है पूछना चाहता है वो बेरोजगार जो डिग्री लाने के बाद पकौड़ा तल रहा है वो पूछना चाहता है कि आप उन आलोच बच्चों से पहले हमारी तो जिम्मेदारी उठाइए मानवर अंत में मैं यही कहना चाहूंगा कि ये जन्म दर बढ़ाने की बात नहीं करते बल्कि मृत्यु दर बढ़ाने की बात करते हैं इसलिए हमको लोगों को शिक्षित करना पड़ेगा उन्हें सेक्स एजुकेशन देना पड़ेगा उन्हें परिवार नियोजन के बारे में बताना पड़ेगा गर्भ निरोधक उपायों के बारे में बताना पड़ेगा और जरूरत पड़ने पर एक सख्त कानून ला करके देश को बढ़ती हुई जनसंख्या के प्रकोप से बचाना चाहिए और बचाना पड़ेगा अंत में मैं यही कहूंगा कि एक सख्त कानून को लाइए और देश को प्रगति की गति से आगे बढ़ाइए तेज गति से आगे बढ़ाइए धन्यवाद जय हिंद जय भारत बहुत ही हम बोल सकते हैं अच्छे ढंग से आदिब खान ने अपने भाषण को रखा इस बात विवाद प्रतियोगिता में और 
अच्छे तथ्यों के साथ अपने इस भाषण को संपूर्ण किया उसके बाद अब नेक्स्टली आई बी मूविंग टू वर्ड्स द नेक्स्ट पार्टिसिपेंट सनिया स्वागल श्याम ओके शनिया यू कैन स्टार्ट योर स्पीच नाउ योर टाइम स्टार्ट इंडिया a third world country which became independent in the year 1947 when it was robbed of almost all its resources by the colonizers now stands at sixth position in terms of economic power and it is expected that india will be the third largest economic power in the world by the year 19 2030 according to a research by center for economics and business research india is now talking about atmanirbhar bharat self reliant india Looking at the situation that existed in India in the United 47 no one could have expected India to progress this far and growing population of India has helped hugely in this progress let me tell you how so the first one is multinational corporations all over the world are scrambling to operate in India because of the availability of huge amount of workers and when these corporations operate in India India receives huge amount of foreign direct investments In the last 21 years India received 768.5 billion dollars in terms of foreign direct investment and this has helped India in progress if we look at a comparative analysis Pakistan and India became independent in the same year but Pakistan does not have as much population as state of India and Pakistan received only 1.55 billion dollar as foreign direct investment in the year 2020 to 21 while india received 58.37 billion dollars of course there are other factors at play but the availability of large number of workers plays a huge role second point is about diaspora according to the global migration report of 2020 india is the largest originator of foreign migrants there are 17.5 million strong diasporas originating from india working in foreign countries and they contribute in the progress in india in different forms the first one is foreign remittances india is the receiver of the largest amount of foreign remittances as compared to all other countries around the world india receives 78.6 billion dollar as foreign remittances in the year 2020 if we compare Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Pakistan all together received less than 50,000 50 million dollar in the same year. And at the same time, because India has a huge amount of population, many Indians are going to other countries and working in those countries. And as a result of which India is attracting attracting investments. For example, Microsoft has employed a large number of indian employees and microsoft has been investing in developmental efforts in india through its india development center which are operating in hyderabad bangalore noida right now this center provides opportunity to the youth in terms of employment as well as internships therefore when indians work outside they bring home not only remittances but also progress in the form of investments also There are many people like Kamala Harris, Priti Patel, who are working in top political positions in different countries, Over, and they prove their now. intelligence. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, Shashanya, it was a really a very good speech with lots of information and a great research. I'll say over here. Thank you so much. Okay, now we'll be moving to the towards the next participant, Abhishri Pandey. Sir, am I audible? Yes, you are. Kindly. just a minute am i visible yes you are visible abhishri okay so manisha kindly set the time okay abhishri uh, your video is not visible to us mm, is it visible now yes now it is visible all right so are we starting yes you can start it is rightly said that the country's asset the country's most important asset is its people the country's power lies in its people and i will be speaking forward this motion to forwarding this motion i would like i would like to put down a very thoughtful aspect to this debate why and how can we ever consider a human life a liability every human has fullest utmost potential to help development of people of country of the nation and if you look at the current current uh, young population it is very educated it is liberal and it knows what to do with the world it knows how to help the world 
addressing some of the current social issues we face we look might look at the covid perspective and we can see how many lives have been lost in this so if our country is going through a battle of survival of the fittest won't more lives won't more population just ensure prolonged survival secondly i would like to look at the gender disbalance uh, the sex ratio disbalance girl child was not allowed to be born for such a long time for centuries and we are finally in an era where education has made it possible for people to know that abortion of the girl child is wrong under wrong circumstances obviously and so if we are not giving the girl child a chance to be born when finally people are willing to have daughters when finally people are willing to raise daughters when women are finally making a stand in the world how is it justified that we can just like stop people from giving birth because maybe girls finally have a chance and you can't just stop that thirdly i would like to look at the economic perspective every every person has different variety of skills different capabilities and obviously a huge stack of potential to add to the workforce of the country india can educate and refine these skills and use it to become one of the most strongest economies in the world and lastly i would like to say that our country also faces a problem of corrupt politicians of corrupt politics which has led to not having a strong leadership since a very long time if we do need a strong leadership i think for that we need educated people and the illiteracy rate is only increasing with time hence we can say that the upcoming generations will be much more woke and much more aware of what is happening around them and will elect better leaders thank you so much all right abhishek a uh, very well spoken fine thank you so much now we'll be moving towards the last participant of the slot shruti singh can shruti singh hear me yes am i audible and visible now mm yes shruti now you are audible and visible okay shruti your time starts now kindly manisha please set the stopwatch okay uh, good morning ladies and gentlemen Welcome from this side of house, and I am Shruti Singh, standing here in favor of the motion. I would like to start by stating the scenarios of two countries and how population growth has made one country better than the other. According to Jason Hickel, an academic in University of London and also a fellow member in Royal Society of Arts, had once stated that Britain has earned over forty-five trillion dollars through Indian colonial rule. and india just after the time of independence was meager an economy of 2600 billion dollars and now india is counted among the five biggest economies of the whole world and has an economy even more than that of britain so don't you find it surprising that with so much amount of wealth being accumulated through the colonialism the in britain should be among those five biggest economies or an economy better than india india within a short span of 70 years had grown its economy 250 times also its population rose with an annual average of 1.1% per annum due to a rising population level the demand for goods and services rose leading to an ultimate rise in production income wages employment uh, government tax revenue and so on and this is how the economy grew with the passage of time so now i would like to also theoretically and economically lay the perspective of mine so uh, according to various graphs of population it is being shown that it uh, a population curve basically shows an upward sloping curve ab initio and then it constantly decreases and constantly declines afterwards so this is a basically a time series graph and it basically declines with the passage of time so many european nations and other countries like japan have have been constantly declining scenario have been showing a very constantly declining scenario in their own way and also their economy is getting constant and showing very limited growth in gdp but i think that other countries like india and china on other hand is showing a limit growth only due to this reason that we are constantly being growed by the way of population therefore now i would like to conclude by saying that population is reputably plays a very interesting role in the growth of an economy in fact according to many economists it is being said that through population growth an economy can expect its growth in its multiples last but not the least i would also like to overlay this fact 
that my fellow competitors might contradict that a country needs a population growth guys and not an overpopulation growth this is our, our, i would like to rest my case thank you okay so very perfectly 3 minutes on the time okay shruti it was a very nice and a very great speech i would say now we are done with our speech round now we'll move on the additional ideas and analysis and personal opinion round starting with the first participant shubh ashish patel kindly unmute yourself and start and only you'll be getting one minute jaise hamara ek perception tha ki pehle se hamara perception ban gaya ki population hogi to poverty hogi under nourishment hoga and jo sab problems hogi sirf population ki wajah se hogi lekin jo hamari अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट uh, का हमारी ग्रोथ ना होने का रीजन सिर्फ और सिर्फ पॉपुलेशन नहीं है हमारी इलिटरेसी रेट हमारी पुअर हेल्थ केयर सर्विसेज और हमारे यहाँ का करप्शन और हमारे यहाँ का ब्यूरोक्रेटिक सिस्टम इसका एक बहुत बड़ा जिम्मेदार है हमारे यहाँ पे अगर कोई भी uh, दूसरी कंपनी आती है बाहर से विदेश से इन्वेस्टमेंट करने तो उसको यही डर रहता है कि मुझे कौन से सरकारी ऑफिस में जाना है सरकार कब चेंज हो जाएगी ये सरकार से इसकी बनेगी कि नहीं बनेगी इसका कुछ होगा कि नहीं होगा वो बेचारे इसमें ही उलझ के रह जाते हैं इसलिए हमने मेड इन इंडिया नाम का एक इनिशिएटिव तो बना दिया कि हमारे यहाँ पे आइए इन्वेस्टमेंट करिए लेकिन आज भी हम उन बड़ी बड़ी कंट्रीज से जो कि वर्ल्ड वर्ल्ड सेक्टर को प्रोडक्शन में लीड कर रही है उनसे बहुत पीछे है थैंक यू ऑल राइट थैंक यू शुभाशीष आई मूव टूदर पार्टिसिपेंट गविश Gavish kindly unmute yourself and start with your one minute round all right so every coin has two sides and um, as i mentioned in my argument that to equip the current population with knowledge and skills is the way to progress but if we really wish to proceed in true sense i believe the other side is to stabilize our population now whilst researching i came across the fact that a population can only be stabilized if it maintains a replacement fertility rate of 2.1 and it is also observed that fertility rate and literacy rate are inversely related so but yesterday i was watching news and i came across this news in uttar pradesh that the government is offering various incentives and lakhs and lakhs of rupees for people to get sterilized now i wonder to what extent is it really justified because at the end of the day it will only create a burden on the government expenditure right and uh, also it might al- also fail like the forced sterilizations of 1975 hence instead i believe that what we should do is to spread awareness and education related to contraceptive measures and family planning this is the way the government should follow thank you so much gavesh your time is over now i'll be moving to our another participant adip khan please unmute yourself and start mahodaya jab mujhe ye vishay prapt hua aur mujhe badhti hui jansankhya ke khilaf bolna tha tab mere man mein khayal aaya कि क्या बढ़ती हुई जनसंख्या को रोकना परिवार नियोजन करना नसबंदी करना या अलग अलग उपाय करना क्या वाकई में प्रगति से खिलवाड़ है मेरे अंतर मन ने मुझे जवाब दे दिया महोदय मैंने सोचा हमारी थाली में जब खाना होता है हम खाना भी तो उतना ही खाते हैं जितना पेट को आवश्यकता होती है अगर खाना ज्यादा खा लिया जाए तो क्या होगा क्या भूकंप आना क्या बाढ़ आना क्या बरसात होना यह प्रगति की देन नहीं है पर सोचिए अगर हम इसे प्रगति की देन मान करके इसको रोकने के उपाय ना करें तो विश्व का क्या हाल होगा हम भूकंप की दिशा को मोड़ने का काम करते हैं तूफान की दिशा को मोड़ने का काम करते हैं भूकंप को रोकने का काम करते हैं या रोका नहीं जा सकता तो वहां के लोगों को उठा करके कहीं और पे हम रख देते हैं ताकि वहां पे लोगों को बचाया जा सके तो आज अगर हम जनसंख्या नियंत्रण की बात कर रहे हैं और तो मैं बताना चाहूंगा कि यह हम मानव जाति को खत्म करने की बात नहीं कर रहे हैं बल्कि बचाने की बात कर रहे हैं और देश और दुनिया के विकास को आगे बढ़ाने की बात कर रहे हैं बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद समय समाप्त थैंक यू सो मच नेक्स्ट पार्टिसिपेंट ओवर हियर इज श्रुति श्रुति सिंह पर्सनली ओवर ले दिस फैक्ट दैट आई मैं माई स्पीच विच वॉज आई वॉज टॉकिंग अबाउट बेसिकली पॉपुलेशन ग्रोथ एंड नॉट ओवर पॉपुलेशन ग्रोथ सो देर इज अ वेरी माइन्यूट डिफरेंस बिटवीन वेन वी टॉक अबाउट पॉपुलेशन ग्रोथ एंड ओवर पॉपुलेशन ग्रोथ so when we talk about the graph that i mentioned population curve graph so it had a, a upward sloping then it constant then it declines so i am uh, of this opinion that when a country is moving on the upward side at i mean a growing side and i mean a population growth side then 
at that time i am of a personal opinion that economy that economically a country is progressing at that moment of time like we can see from our instance our economy like before 70 years we were an economy of merely 2600 billion dollars and now we are an economy of 4.06 billion million dollars and similarly let's take an example of china as well it started with an economy of just 1.6 billion dollars and now it is a economy thank you so much shruti your time is over okay. now i'll be moving towards the next participant uh shusania kindly unmute yourself and start your time starts now as an extension i would like to give an analogy imagine being born in a family with parents working as farmers in your own farm and there are children of three the parents will be reluctant to send their children away to others work because of the loss that might be incurred in their own farm due to lack of laborers but if you if there are seven or eight children the parents will be able to send three or four children to others occupation thereby bringing income home the situation is somewhere similar to india but the uh, difference is that these people not these people working in foreign countries not only bring remittances in india but also prove an image to the people outside the world for example when people like satya narela work as chief executive officer in microsoft when harjit sarjan was work as minister of defense in canada it is proved that indians are smart and india has a huge amount of population who can be working and this attract foreign investment and india needed foreign investment for progress now the india time is over kindly stop chitanya thank you so much abhishek kindly start with your one minute round am i audible and visible yes please start all right so i would like to like point out one thing which i heard um when you say that you are saving mankind from controlling the population i honestly believe that only man can save man only mankind can solve the problems brought on by mankind hence controlling the generation of mankind is not the solution we have uh, we are in an era where we are facing pandemics social issues economic issues all of them all at once and when we have a population of young fresh minds from diverse backgrounds diverse skills as india is a very diverse country we have different opinions different potentials different views and all of them working towards the same goal india's development if we have such a huge army such a good stock of people ready to help us why should we stop them why should we stop the generation of such minds because the literacy rate is only going to increase hence the development is also only going to increase so i do not agree with the fact that population controlling is to save the mankind instead i think if we have more thank you so much sanya a- thank you so much abhishri yeah the time is over all right so now we are complete with the slot 2 and uh, i think the time is also going to over of this uh, session thank you so much everyone for joining it was a great presentation a great uh, speech from your side and you did very well thank you so much you all can leave the session now